Hey everyone, so I wanted to share a recent catastrophic failure and uh, attempt to fix experience I had recently. Um, I printed this dragon door knocker um, found on Thingiverse by Shira. Um, it's a pretty wonderful model with uh, a lot of different options to it. And I wanted to go ahead and print that for a buddy of mine. And uh, with the settings that I had, it was going to take about 60 hours to print. And 17 hours into it, the print failed. Um, more accurately, my UPS failed. And for whatever reason, it started beeping. And it was going to drive everybody in the house nuts. I won't go into details as to, you know, options of how I could have fixed that. I don't have a cable long enough where I could connect it to a computer and, and disable the alarm. Uh, so I decided what better time than to try to test actually resuming a failed print. And I do have a CR10S4. It is not the newer model that has an auto resume on it. So this is my experience in trying to salvage that print about uh, maybe 20% into it. So the printer was still running, but the beeping was driving me crazy. And I needed to find a point where I could stop the print and have a reference without having to break out calipers and measure and whatnot. So I grabbed Repetier, opened it up, and started looking at the layers and seeing, figuring out how far I was and trying to find a reference point where I could successfully stop this print. And I found it here at uh, layer 143 where it finishes the little mountaintop shape up there. And on the next layer, it would print the uh, uh, southeast portion of that and then do a really long travel move so the plan was I would go ahead and stop that print during that travel move and then I would go in and edit g-code and uh, and have a starting reference point uh, to resume this print I won't go into details about editing the g-code there are plenty of references online the, and YouTube that you can search for that which is how I found the information I will reiter reiterate that you really need to make sure that the model is clear of the print carriage as it homes and then you're going to want to raise that print carriage up much higher than the model is before you do any travel moves to try to get to the point where you need to resume printing so I noticed two things the first was that Repetier was showing that I was starting at layer 144 but in their display they had a, a zero layer of some sort and I was actually starting on 143 that was an easy fix the other issue I was running into turned out to be a mechanical issue where the printer had uh, vibrated and moved too far back towards the wall and what I didn't catch is when it had started printing the bed it actually hit the wall on the Y home move and caused a few skips most likely on the motor and belt and had offset the y-axis home position uh, from the get-go of the print. So now I had to figure out how to offset all of the g-code that was remaining which was no easy task trying to go through notepad and adjust all of my y-axis and add uh, what turned out to be roughly eight millimeters to the dimensions that were given within that g-code. Luckily, I found on a Google search and the Marlon Wikipedia, the M206 command. The M206 command actually creates an offset. Like you can be in a given area and you can tell it to offset your home position a certain amount. Uh, it's fairly easy to use. You can search it and uh, find, it on, find it on the Marlon Wiki. Um, the, the only goofy thing that I'll mention, is, to me it seems goofy, is that it's actually opposite of what you would think it would be. So, for example, if you wanted to offset and, and go up, have it move up two millimeters in the, in the z-axis, you're actually creating a negative offset. I guess in some respects that, that um, makes sense because you're creating the offset and you're trying to push it in the opposite direction so that's why you would use a negative so my next attempt I tried using eight millimeter offset and it actually was even further off than it was and then I realized okay I need to use a negative eight millimeter offset and everything will be fine and naturally on the third attempt 
it did pretty well and it came pretty darn close uh, I had a little bit of layer shifting that you could notice but it was nothing really to write home about um, certainly fixable a little bit of sanding or a, a soldering iron or whatever and it was low enough in the model in this particular instance and everything's it's got quite a bit of texture to it that you really wouldn't have noticed um, you know most people are not going to notice the layer shift in it even if I left it the way it is this is a cross-section of the model as it was printing where you can notice that I was just off a hair um, on one axis it, it appears to be accurate and on on the other it does not uh, this model is slightly rotated on the bed so it's not pure 90 degrees that you're seeing here and um, I'm assuming that had something to to play in the uh, optical illusion of it showing one side to the other but uh, suffice to say uh, the layer shifting as you can see in these subsequent photos really isn't horrible or terrible and it, it saved me another 18 hours of, of printing and more importantly filament because this this print used just about the entire spool if I were to stop it then then uh, and uh, restart with the existing color it would have taken more filament in, the, in a in a filament change throughout um, wouldn't have been a big deal but still uh, I could go ahead and resume the print and have it turn out salvageable the only other things I would add is uh, I printed the model that had the built-in supports there are some comments about the model and the supports that fail and so I had to add some uh, straws and hot glue to try to keep these supports from wobbling all over the place um, also some of the built-in supports when you go to cut them away they end up um, snapping and tearing out leaving some holes that you have to go back in and fill later um, some of them are a little more horrible than others but again it's nothing a little uh, bondo or wood filler or something like that can't handle and, and hide so hopefully one day I'll get this thing uh, sanded and filled and painted and and then I'll update the the video on the final piece. Thanks.